So when everybody has a camera on their phone, how are you going to stand out? If your photographs look like everybody else's, if your photographs seem as though they could be done with somebody's smartphone, they will be undervalued and ignored. So what I should suggest is that you really want to do something different. And different means using longer lenses and using lighting to your advantage. Natural light is beautiful, but natural light is natural. And therefore, the majority of the people have the same access to it. You want to be using flashes and reflectors and such like. And so what we're looking for is the different light to, to take photographs of our furry friends. We're gonna be looking at the beauty dish compared to the octobox, compared to the reflector. What is gonna give us the best photographs? Let's find out. So here we have the California Sun Bounce. Pretty easy to put together. And the reason why you would get something like this is because it is a flat surface. And if you're reflecting light, the flat surface is gonna be more efficient. So this side, the white side, doesn't actually need to be flat because the light bouncing off it is diffused. It's going in all directions. And therefore it's not so important that it's flat. But this side, ideally, is specular and therefore it's much more directional and the normal circular reflectors often turn up like Pringles and therefore don't really have much effective surface. This is going to actually have a more rigid frame and allow a better control of specular reflections. If you're just going to use the white side then the circular reflectors are better value. Hello lambs. Hello little lambs. I prefer using a flash because it gives me more versatility. I can actually overpower the sunlight. Whereas with the reflector, I can't do that. I can only have less than the sunlight. So this is the flash we're gonna be using today. It's the Godox AD200 portable flash. It comes in this kit. You can take the Fresnel head off and replace it with a bare bulb. That's why I use it. It has a longer battery life by far than, for example, the Nikon SB910 or the Canon equivalent and it has high speed sync with that small portable trigger, which I found to be very reliable and compact. You can also control the power of the flash from that trigger. This kit includes things like a barn doors, which are useless, but also color gels, which are actually quite useful. You have the battery charger and it comes in a nice little pouch. So the AD200 is our flash for the day. Now this actually isn't going to be a direct comparison between the different modifiers because the lambs are too fast for that. Instead it's going to be a comparison between them, looking at the beauty dish, the semi-parabolic and the reflector. And it's too many photographers who found that a gust of wind can dash their hopes and smash their flash onto the stony ground. We don't want that, so we have a lovely beauty dish. So this is going to be our first modifier and we're going to be using it with the Godox AD200 flash, one of my favourites because it's small, portable and easy to use. So let's get started. Now the beauty dish is going to be one of our favourite modifiers because it is both hard and also not overpowering and that's because it has a deflector dish. So you don't actually get the direct light from the flash. All of the light from the flash hits the dish and then bounces onto the subject. Now, what we want to do is have this dish, which has a diameter of about 42 centimeters, maybe 16 inches, more or less. We want to have that probably about two to three times the distance 
of the diameter. So the lamp should be more or less there. Now obviously, the further our subject is from the dish, the more hard that light is, the harsher the shadows, the sharper the shadows. And that's fine, but it's not what we want. We want that magic beauty dish quality. The major advantage of beauty dish is the fact that it doesn't really get affected so much by the wind. The downside is obviously it's quite bulky to travel with, albeit not heavy. So our plan now is to photograph our subjects, our little lamb on the wood here, just to see the sort of photographs that we can come up with. So now with the beauty dish, what we also want to do is look at the Octobox. Now the Octobox is my favorite modifier outside of a parabolic reflector because it has such a versatility. It's a large modifier and yet flag it or bring it further back and it can be a harsh and hard modifier. You can grid it, you can keep it bare, you can diffuse it once or twice, you can even have it diffused and then diffused again through a sheet of diffusion material. The Octobox is a versatile and brilliant modifier. So let's see which one we have. So here we have the Celine's 120. Let's see how long it takes to put up compared to our beauty dish that we just pop right on. Diffusion cloth. Grid. Lamb. Another diffusion cloth. Yes, lambs. Yes, lambs. Yes, lambs. Yes. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. So this is a peg, which I actually bought in an army surplus shop, and it's gonna allow me to peg the light stand down, make sure that the Celine's doesn't fly away on grass. Obviously sandbags are better when you've got a hard floor. Now the reason that we use this large light source is because it's almost imperceptible to somebody who's not aware of photography and lighting ratios. We're using the sun as a rim light and we're using the Godox 8200 flash into a Celine's 120 parabolic with a single diffusion, the inner diffusion, as our key light. And so, and that allows us to create a sort of renaissance beautiful light that is both directional and also subtle. And we've got our willing models here who keep running off. Lambs, stay, stay. So we're bringing the lambs into the scene now and you can see that there is a slight backlighting, and that's the sun coming through hazy cloud cover. And what we're doing is we're using the Celine's parabolic with the inner diffuser as a very close, soft key light. And that's going to give a nice, natural looking light that allows us to balance with the sunlight. With 16 sides instead of eight. So actually a better modifier, but slightly harder slightly slower to put up. So you have the Celine's 120 semi-parabolic. We have the Beauty Dish 42 centimeter silver. And we also have the reflector. So pros and cons of each one. Pros of the Celine's. Obviously the light is beautiful. It's a large light source. It's very versatile because you have the grid, you have the size of it so you can move it back and still have a hard light. You can move it close and have a really nice soft wrapping light. Still contrast because of the depth of it. You have the inner, the outer diffusers, and you have also the grid as well. So you have this very large light source, but still collimated using that grid. Beautiful light source, bit of a pain, and you need that peg or a sandbag to make sure that it doesn't fly away. 
We also have used the Beauty Dish. It doesn't blow around so much in the wind. The light is slightly harder, which gives a nice contrast to it. And above all else, it's more compact to circle. Although actually, it's still quite a pain to carry around. Now, the reflector that we have packs up small, but obviously long. It's very light, and it allows us to use the natural light. We've got the inner diffuser, the outer diffuser, we've got the grid, so you've also got this very large light source, but still collimated because of that grid. And so the light quality for me is actually best with the Celines. But we've seen that on a windy day, it can actually blow away and smash the flash. Wind can upset the chute. And therefore, another option is the Beauty Dish, which is smaller and gives a harder light, but because of that deflecting plate, it gives a good quality light, a nice light. And obviously, it eats a lot less light than the larger reflector, and therefore it's more efficient, especially with that silver coating. So, if wind is going to be a factor, the Beauty Dish is definitely something to bear in mind. Now, the difficulty with the Beauty Dish is that it's actually quite bulky. It's quite a bit of a pain to carry around, likewise with the Octobox. And therefore, we also have a very lightweight reflector. The sad thing about the reflector is that it doesn't give us the ability to overpower the sunlight. But what it does do is it gives us the ability to use the natural light and wield it and make some really nice photographs like that. And often, if you're just photographing and you want a reflector, the white side of the large Pringle reflectors is going to be fine. But if we want to have specular highlight and actually have a higher directionality and intensity of the light, then a reflector that is properly flat is going to give that specular characteristic a greater depth. And so those are what we've tested and these are the photographs. Be sure to like and subscribe, press that bell on the subscribe and leave any comments and questions and suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Thanks so much. This is Ben from EnglishPhotographer.com.